Hello everyone and welcome to another celebration of our 50th anniversary as a parish. Um, it's been a privilege for me to be pastor of Nativity Parish for the last three years. I can't imagine a better time to be here than when all of these celebrations are taking place and it's so wonderful to be a part of you know, 50 years of faith. And the faith here is so strong and so deep, I am overwhelmed by the love and the outreach that this parish offers so many. You are an inspiration not only to me, but to many thousands of people that you have helped, starting like with, let's say, the Thanksgiving dinner and continuing with the outreach to so many different groups and always um, taking the role of reaching out to the downtrodden, to those that are on the periphery of society. It's just been a, a privilege. I want you to know that obviously one of the highlights of my time here was the uh, mass at the arena, where we actually went to the roots, and we had over 800 people there celebrating with us. It was just a delightful celebration of faith, and to have many people who were, uh, who were uh, there at the initial Mass, you know, at the arena, with us was uh, an extremely uh, um, faith-filled and very proud moment for me. The priests and deacons that have served our parish The land, which is the present site of Nativity, was purchased in March of 1959. Five years later, Father Al Lyson was appointed first pastor of the parish by Bishop Stanislaus Bona. Parishioners from St. Agnes and St. Joseph's Green Bay and St. Boniface and St. Joseph's de Pere made up the new parish. Sunday worship services in the early years of Nativity were held at the Brown County Arena. on South Oneida Street was purchased and served as a rectory, parish center, and meeting place for daily mass. 
The Broadway Center was purchased in May of 1965. Its primary purpose was for faith formation. Construction was approved for the True Lane Center in June of 1965. The current rectory on Kasner was purchased in July of 1967. These temporary accommodations served the needs of Nativity as the first building committee searched and researched new churches near and far and interviewed various architects, finally choosing John Tillman's design for the new church. As one of the first church structures to be built in the United States after Vatican II, the uniqueness of Nativity's design set it apart from all others in the diocese. As the architect explained, the directives of the Ecumenical Council have been followed, and the frills of the old Gothic tradition are gone. The church is made of natural materials which are not being disguised in any way. Father Al Lyson added that the earthy material, the use of daylight from plain glass windows, and the lack of finishing in the concrete and brick show integrity, strength, and endurance. Five years of growing as a family, a rather large family now, and as I think of these 25 years, I reflect back to where I was about 25 years ago, and I think, Jim, I was just recovering from teaching your class. When was it that you uh, guys were there? I think, uh, I think we left in 1961. 61, so I just had a couple of years to uh, recover. Right. But I know that when I read the uh, paper in 64, I'd just gotten back from a uh, summer grant of study in India, thinking I was happy for Father Lyson and the new parish, and, but I had no idea that in uh, another 15 years that this would be part of my joy and my heritage and that I would have served here and uh, been blessed by that. Uh, 1964, I had, uh, I think I was in either second or third year of theology mm -hmm. at St. Paul in Minnesota, and uh, but I do remember pretty clearly about hearing about Father Lyson uh, being asked to start the new parish out here. Um, and I, I knew Father Lyson from his days when he taught at the seminary. Yeah, we were together, yeah. Right, in those days. And he, uh, and I thought to myself that, you know, that it would be uh, uh, an exciting possibility for Father Al uh, to begin a new parish. And to be a part of it now is really exciting for me. Uh, dedication of our prayer garden, our bell tower. Um, the bell tower was a gift to us. That idea came from Father Becker. And I was very honored and happy and privileged to carry it through. And now it's a reality. And the prayer garden is so beautiful that will draw us into a prayerful awareness of the deep goodness and giftedness that God has given us in this 50 years. As we look forward, uh, I'm especially looking forward to the uh, activity in December where we're going to gather hopefully up to 30 different nativity scenes um, that will come from all over the uh, area 
to uh, offer like family celebrations with their own unique um, crutches and nativity scenes. It'll be just a beautiful experience. Father Al Lyson, founding pastor of Nativity of Our Lord Parish, was born in Green Bay in 1920. He spent his childhood on Bond Street with his parents and his brothers. His preparation for the priesthood was interrupted by military service in World War II. His parents, Alfred Sr. and Margaret, and his brothers, Jim and Dick. He served in the U.S. Infantry with the rank of Major in China, Burma, and India. Upon completion of his theology studies, he was ordained in 1951 and immediately named temporary administrator of Holy Name of Mary Parish, Maplewood, Wisconsin. In August 1951, he was named assistant pastor at St. Patrick's Parish, Menasha, and in 1953, he was one of three priests named to the original staff at Sacred Heart Seminary in Oneida. Father Al was named assistant to Auxiliary Bishop John Grellinger at St. Mary's Parish, Oshkosh, in 1958. He was well known for his speaking ability and conducted a series of weekly With the founding of the new Ashwabanon Parish in 1964, Father Lyson began work to get the church and parish buildings constructed. His efforts, along with the support of his parishioners, culminated in the dedication ceremonies in 1967. Father Al was a man of great compassion and intellect. Pastoral ministry was his passion. Opening this new parish at the end of Vatican II was a dream come true for him. At Nativity, he found those who were ready to be challenged to live the gospel in an ever-shifting social order, and he made that clear in his sermons with his giant flip charts and roving microphone, 
what that witness should look like. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of you who have persevered, not only in your Catholic faith, but in your membership here at Nativity. Thank you very much, and may God continue to bless you, your families, their children, and your great-grandchildren as we grow together in faith and love through Christ.